This is the most important question. I already know what your answer is going to be, but I need to hear this. Okay. This is flat out the best option. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Fibular hemimilia is when you are born without your fibula. Your fibula is the smaller of the two bones in the lower half of your leg. And when you're missing your fibula bone, it also affects above and below where that bone is supposed to be. Some people with this condition are born with club foot. Some people are born with a non-deformed foot, which is what I have. However, since I'm missing this bone, I do not have a fully functioning ankle, and therefore my foot stays pointed at all times. All my body weight when I walk on that leg is applied to the ball of my foot and my toes. It also affects my knee and my hips. I don't have an ACL, a PCL, a meniscus. My knee is very unstable, and because of the length discrepancy, my knees are uneven. My hips are uneven just like my knees because that length difference is so severe. Standing or walking for long periods of time puts a lot of strain on my body. Going to the store, standing in the shower or in the kitchen to make food, enjoying places such as Six Flags or the mall with my friends, these are all things that I absolutely dread. Even sitting for extended periods, I start shifting after 20 minutes because of my hips. And all of these things are, they've only gotten worse as I've grown. And I think it's kind of inevitable that it's going to bother you a little bit. When you're People say, well, if you have a leg and a foot, why do you need a prosthesis? And when they ask that question, they're not looking right at it. When you're looking straight at it, you can clearly see why there would be strain. I can walk without my prosthetic, but the point of it is to help alleviate as much of the discomfort as it can. People see the fake foot and they get confused thinking I don't have my real one, but the purpose of the fake foot is to add some height to the leg when I walk with my prosthetic. And the fake foot is flat so I can put a shoe on it. I've had a prosthesis from the time I started walking up until this point. There it is. It's hard. It usually takes a shoe spoon or a shoe horn to put tennis shoes on the foot. And then there's been the issue of fitting the tongue of tennis shoes under the bit where my real foot goes. There's so little space. Somebody else usually has to do it for me because I'm not strong enough. I didn't get to have 30 different pairs of shoes like every other teenage girl. I only had what would work with my prosthetic. Up until last year, I didn't even have a fake foot with the big toe separated from the smaller toes, so up until I was 21, sandals were even out of the question. Does the prosthesis alleviate a little of the strain? Yes. Is it enough to make living a normal life bearable? No. It looks weird, it's heavy, it's hard to explain to people, and above all, it's still just not comfortable. My foot is doing things it's not supposed to in order to make up for everything that's missing, and it's painful. So we came up with a solution. We got enough clearance we can put any foot so on. So you're not, you're not amputating up here. No, no, no. Below the knee means yeah. below the knee. Yeah. It can be here or here. I mean here. Okay. So as long as he does it up in you know in this window area here, we can fit anything. Uh, did a study looking at amputees versus sort of ankle fusion, multiple limb length things, and it's not even close. I mean, yeah. the, the, the ability to walk for long distances, the exercise tolerance, all that stuff is way higher than that. There you go. Like, I get it. It's just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want this to be the answer, but I get it. Yeah. It's part of being an adult, which absolutely sucks, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to sign, print, date, and time. So our next visit here will be three weeks after surgery. Okay. okay. I will be an amputant as of October 27th, 2016.